Hey guys, uh, welcome to yet another episode from the VoIP guys. Uh, last time around we had a rather detailed introduction to the SIP protocol. and To the protocol stack. Yeah, okay, Which sorry. Which was? <laughs> uh, we had session initiated protocol and description protocol and then the real time uh, protocol for payload transmission and so on. Correct. Yes, got it. <laughs> right, thanks very much for that. Uh, putting me on the spot. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, You're welcome. We're going to go, uh, well, Matthias is going to go a little bit further this time around um, into the actual protocol itself. And uh, yeah, so what are we going to do? Okay, we have a look to the slide again. Uh -huh. um, this is the slide from the last episode. And here we have the real-time protocol, which is actually the payload and SIP and session description. Mm -hmm. Now we have a look in detail to the first protocol, okay. um, which is the SIP protocol, mm -hmm. and we see how that works. Right. If we understand that, mm -hmm. um, then we can debug, I think, the most things. Okay. Um, so it's important to understand that, and it's um, really um, easy to understand. Yeah. It's easy to understand because you can really read the SIP protocol. Okay. So it's not a kind of yeah, unreadable machine generated blah blah. 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 It's machine generated, but it's not um, uh, it's not optimized for machine read and write. It's optimized that humans can read it. Uh, okay, that's um, quite not handy. optimized, but it's okay for humans to read it right. mm -hmm. and to understand it, and that's very important. And that makes uh, really um, makes it easy if you understand it mm -hmm. that you can really read. Aha! This is the uh, site A wants that, uh, site B wants that, and you can understand it right. and see where the problem is. Okay. So it's human readable. Uh -huh. That's the advantage of the SIP protocol, and I think this is a part of the success of the SIP protocol mm -hmm. because it's easy to read, understand, and to implement. Not for everybody, but who has to implement it or has to uh, read it or debug it, mm -hmm. it's just easier than other protocols. Okay. We will have a look at it. Um, it works like this. Here um, we have such a session initiation. Um, what's important to understand, in most cases you have two so-called call legs. Mm -hmm. One from your phone to the PVX you're using, yep. or um, the soft switch, or how you ever call it. Mm -hmm. We should not say PVX. We should say the Advanced Super System Unified Communication. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Blah, 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 blah system. Yeah. Does not matter. Some <laughs> system which can <laughs> speak, which can speak SIP, mm -hmm. it's in between. And then there is another call to the Phone 2. Phone 2 can be the PSDN, this can be the landline, this mm -hmm. could be the GSM network or something, yep. um, or this could be a gateway or blah, blah, blah. But mm -hmm. to understand it and to see that it's not that complicated, we have phone A, some kind of PVX, which could be the Mobidic, and another uh, phone. Mm -hmm. So how does this work? This is a very friendly pro protocol. At first, you get an invite. Oh, that's always nice. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. You get an invitation, and um, phone one says, I invite phone two. Please, I want to talk to phone two. And then um, the PBX answers, I'm trying. Okay. And then the PBX invites the second phone and tries um, to call the second phone. Mm -hmm. So um, there is much in between. There could be something like, hey, you're not allowed to, please send authentication, then you would send again an invite with authentication. Mm -hmm. So in this very easy example, there is no auth, but yeah. um, you can see that it's really friendly and it's really readable. So you have the invite, then it invites the phone B, it is ringing, then the PVX system signals, okay, this is ringing, and then we have the situation, this phone makes dude, dude, mm -hmm. and this phone rings. Right. Um, then there is an okay, that happens if somebody answers the call on this side, mm -hmm. an OK, and um, an OK back to the, f uh, the phone that now we can talk and a uh, is going back that everything is OK. Yeah. And then the session is established. Uh -huh. And from this point on, we are sending media RDP. Mm -hmm. So the media is now going from one phone to the server and from the server to the other phone. Yeah. And this is very important. This is the standard behavior of asterisk. Okay. So if you have a asterisk system, which is like Moby Dick, um, an asterisk system, then the standard behavior is 
exactly like this, media from here to there and from the PBX to the second phone. Okay. This is very important to understand. So the signaling is done between always. The signaling is done between asterisk and the phones. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and the RTP stream is also um, running over asterisk, but not mm. in every case. We will see that this is uh -huh. another case possible. If you remember um, the last video we said, RDP is completely independent, not completely, but it can take an other way through the network uh -huh. yeah, than, yeah. um, than the invitation and then the SIP protocol. Um, then there is another way. The phones could do something which is called re-invite. Right. So they can talk and say, hey, phone, um, you reach able through the asterisk server and then the other phone says, yes, and, uh, but we could talk directly to each other if you want to. We don't need the PBX system. Uh -huh. And then they can send directly data from phone A to phone B. To phone B. Uh -huh. I have a slide for that. This is the re-invite and this is how it works. So the invite is the same and then followed by the re-invite. And that's very, very important um, that then the media goes directly from phone A to phone B. Bypassing the... Uh, yeah. By communication system. server. And now we should talk about the advantages or disadvantages. When should I do this? When should, shouldn't I do That's this? useful to know actually, yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you like to do something like voice recording mm -hmm. or recording of calls, yeah. then for sure the stream has to go through the asterisk system. Yeah. Because mm. if the asterisk system does not see the stream, it cannot record it. Uh -huh. Or there are some special features in Asterisk, like um, you can press a key, DTMF key, mm -hmm. and then uh, Asterisk does something. You can do this outside through the SIP protocol, through signaling through mm -hmm. the SIP protocol and subscriptions and so on. But in a um, simple case, you just can wait that somebody presses one, yeah. and then the Asterisk server does something. Okay. And then he has to read, um, he has to listen to the stream mm -hmm. and say, hey, this was a beep, now I can do something. All right, so for example, if you're setting up your asterisk system for a contact center, mm -hmm. you would probably want to use uh, just going over the uh, server for call recording, quality control purposes, mm -hmm. and so on. Okay. Yes. In what scenarios would you use the re invite? The re invite is very handy if you don't want the whole payload going through your asterisk system. Maybe you have 1,000 users, mm -hmm. and everybody's payload, which is the main load in the network mm -hmm. goes through uh, the asterisk server. Yep. Why? Um, mm -hmm. You can bypass it, then um, there, there is no, yeah, no load on the asterisk server itself. Okay. So maybe it's much more, perf much more performant to do it like this. Uh -huh. Or let's think about your asterisk is in a data center mm -hmm. and you and me want to call each other from one office to the other. Yeah. We're sitting, um, let's say there are 10 meters between us, mm -hmm. but we are lazy and don't want to stand <laughs> up. So I call you. Yeah. What happens? The signaling goes through our data center, yeah. mm -hmm. but the payload can run from my phone on the local LAN directly to your phone. Uh -huh. That's very, very good. Yeah, and it's much better for the server. It's also, I mean, for internal calls, it makes sense pretty much because yeah. you don't need any extra bells and whistles like call recording and so on. Yes. So yeah. you always have to think about that. The parameter and asterisk, we will see that later, is can we invite yes or no, okay. if you allow this or not. Mm -hmm. But the easiest way is to um, go uh, to, to route all traffic over the server. Yeah. Why? Um, it works in most cases. <laughs> um, and the next thing is, let's think about you have site A and site B, and they have different networks. Mm -hmm. And maybe phone A is not allowed to speak to phone B directly, mm -hmm. but over the PBX yep. or over the asterisk server. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe it does something. And if you don't know that it could be like this with the re-invite, yep. then you get really confused and you don't know how to debug it. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important for you to understand, again, the SIP protocol with the session description and the session initiation is one mm -hmm. part, and the other part is the payload, which can um, go another way through your network, okay. um, depends on your configuration. Uh -huh. and that's really important to understand, yep. and it's important to understand how to debug it and how to um, read the SIP protocol live, how you can do that, but yeah. that's part of one of our next. Yeah, when are we going to get onto the debugging? Yeah.
Yeah, okay. So next time, debugging? Or? Maybe a little bit more introduction than debugging. Okay, <laughs> fine. <We'll see. laughs> right. Yeah, it's quite a co complex uh, topic. So, right, um, there you have it. Uh, next time around, we'll go in even more depth into uh, SIP, and then eventually we'll get around to debugging. Um, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, goodbye. Bye.